This program is brought to you by Emory University. Through a directed study with the Michael C. Carlos Museum Conservation Lab at Emory University, I have researched the techniques of ancient gold granulation and how chemistry is involved in its process. Granulation is a particularly interesting technique because it was created and perfected in antiquity. The earliest example found was created around 2600 BCE. The technique was used prevalently, then began to fall out of practice during the late Roman period. By analyzing the granulated objects that still exist today, such as the ones in the Carlos Museum, we can rediscover the technique. And by understanding the chemistry behind the granulation process, we can appreciate how people in the ancient world were able to use granulation to decorate their jewelry and other fine objects. Granulation is a decoration that consists of tiny spherical granules of metal that are soldered to a metal background or substrate. The general steps of its creation are to make the tiny granules, place them on the substrate, and then join them to that substrate using glue, flux, and or metallic salts, and applying heat. At the Carlos Museum, there are many examples of objects that have granulation. The ancient technique of granulation was used prevalently by the Mesopotamians, Etruscans, Phoenicians, and Hellenistic peoples until it slowly faded out of practice sometime in the late Roman period and into the Middle Ages. To better understand the minuteness of the granules and the depth of detail found in artworks that are granulated, I met with Jasper Gaunt, the curator of Greek and Roman artifacts at the Michael C. Carlos Museum. Together, we looked at several beautiful examples. I was able to look closely at a 4th century Greek bracelet from the geometric period, which has granule work at its terminals as well as in lines along the length of the bracelet. This earring from 8th century Greece, also from the geometric period, is another example of the type of objects that were decorated using granulation. Also from the Greek geometric period, a small pin from the 7th to 6th centuries is a lovely example of the delicate granulation work that can be done on very small surfaces. A cornucopia-shaped earring from the Hellenistic period in Greece, dating from the 2nd century, is a later example of granulated works. The tiny granules form the letters of an inscription. Inspired by the objects, I wanted to understand the process used to create them. Kathy Kenev is an Atlanta-based jeweler and gemologist, and one of a handful of skilled artists who produce granulated jewelry today. Kathy allowed me to visit her studio to both participate in and observe a demonstration of the technique. Kathy has been studying granulation and creating granulated objects for most of her career. This spectacular necklace is one of her works. To facilitate her studies, she has created copies of ancient objects, and ancient examples have inspired her designs. In this photograph, the object on the left is ancient, and the earring on the right is a creation of Kathy's. Kathy is an expert in colloidal hard soldering, also called chemical soldering. This joining technique was most probably used by ancient artists to attach tiny granules to the substrate. To begin the granulation process, Kathy and I made granules of about 0.54 millimeters in diameter from drawn wire. These are rather large granules. The smaller ones in her studio measure 0.35 millimeters. We used 22 karat gold, which is 91.66% gold. To create granules of the same size, Kathy wrapped gold wire around a tube and trimmed the coiled wire so that it produced many circles of wire that are all the same length. These circles of wire were then melted with a torch on a charcoal block. These wire circles formed granules that were all approximately the same size. The surface tension of the gold caused it to melt into a ball due to the inward attraction of molecules in the liquid metal. This effect is similar to how water forms droplets when it drips from a faucet. Surface tension is the resistance of a liquid to an increase in its surface area. 
A sphere contains the smallest amount of surface area and therefore is the shape that necessitates the least amount of energy from the liquid. An increase in energy would be needed to break the intermolecular forces that arrange the liquid in a sphere. In the example of a gold granule, the liquid is the molten metal. Gas blowtorches, like the one we used in Kathy's studio, did not exist in antiquity. Instead, heat was applied with a brazier, a small furnace, or even an oil lamp. A blowpipe would be used to direct the heat onto a specific area. Once the granules were made, Kathy coated them with a mixture of water, glue, and flux before she placed them on a 22 karat gold surface in the desired design. The glue, typically animal hide glue, held the granules in place on the substrate. The entire object was then put in a small kiln and torched. The flux reduced the melting point of the gold substrate and granule at their point of contact, which enabled them to fuse together without melting the entire object. In antiquity, copper salts were used as the flux. As the object heated up to approximately 100 degrees Celsius, these copper salts oxidized. As the object reached 600 degrees Celsius, the glue burned away and the copper oxide was reduced to metallic copper. At approximately 900 degrees Celsius, the metallic copper mixed with the surrounding gold, fusing the granule to the substrate at their point of contact. In this situation, the copper acted as a solute that lowered the melting point of a solution. When a soluble solute, the copper, was added to a solvent, the gold, it created an impurity that lowered the vapor pressure of the solvent, creating an equilibrium with the even lower vapor pressure of the added solute. When this happened, it lowered the melting point of the solvent. The melting point of gold is 1063 degrees Celsius. Through the addition of the copper, the melting point was lowered to approximately 900 degrees Celsius. Because the copper was added only at the point of contact, the granule and substrate fused or melted together while still retaining their shapes. Once the granules were joined, Kathy placed the object in acid to remove the excess copper from the surface. This step brightened the surface, adding a finishing touch. The resulting object has a gleaming surface where we can clearly see the granules arranged in a delicate design. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.